Ladies and gentlemen, uh, hello and welcome to Jack Connect 2021 Startup Booster. Now, obviously, clearly, you, wherever you are around the world, you can't be with us here in the center of Paris, which is why we come to you. So we would love to know exactly where you are in the world. So on the platform, in the chat, let us know where you are, whether it's early in the morning afternoon you've already had a long day or maybe some of you just before going to bed you're you're tuning in and seeing exactly what this is all about so let us know exactly where you are in the world and we'll see who is actually furthest away from Paris before we go any further just let me introduce myself my name is Peter Hopwood and I am the host of today's extravaganza and tomorrow as well leading you through the leading competition within the composite industry and it really really is all the the startups within the industry this is the competition to be in and and already over the years since 2017 when we launched we fostered more than 500 innovative big ideas and in fact this edition this edition has attracted more than 200 applications from 30 countries so you can imagine you can see the credibility you can feel this is the competition everybody wants to be in now, probably at this stage, you're wondering what the prize is, what the winners are actually going to walk away with. We're looking for three winners, three equal winners, and each of those winners will walk away with 3,500 euros as a financial prize. And maybe even more important than the money, the fact that they will have a, a fully equipped booth at Jack World 2022 right here in Paris next year. And again, having that gives them the opportunity, the, the exposure and the opportunity to have the conversations and the, the connections they need to move forward. Naturally, this would not, all, not be possible at all without our loyal, faithful partners that we have with us certainly this year, Airbus, Daimler and Magna as our innovation partners for 2021. And equally, the recruitment partners as well, who help really spread the word and, uh, and gain as many applications as we can. Naturally, this year, 200, as I say, from 30 different countries. Now, how did this process work out? So we had 200 different applications. We narrowed those down. We sat down, teams from Daimler, teams from Jack, um, Airbus and Magna sat down and it was a tough decision, but they chose 20 exciting startups. These are the best startups that they feel have the biggest opportunity of walking away a winner. So how does it work? Today we will listen to, we will, we will get to know 10 finalists right now. A little bit later on today at five o'clock, we'll hear the next 10. And then that's really where the magic happens with the jury. They will decide over, not overnight, but they will decide after they've heard the 20 big ideas. And tomorrow, tomorrow at 2.30 in the afternoon, we'll have the award ceremony and we will all know who those, those lucky, more well-deserved than lucky winners will be of this competition. Now, here's the thing. Although we will, we will have three lucky deserved winners tomorrow, as you listen to these pictures, you're curious, you want to know more. Maybe somebody in your network wants to know more. Again, you can go over to the Startup Village Digital Trade Show and you can find their booths. You can find more about what they're doing. Start a conversation with them. So regardless of whether they're winners or not, these 20 startups all have the potential naturally to move forward. And, and maybe a conversation that you have with them today or tomorrow maybe in the future will lead to something more fruitful and blossom in the future. Now, the jury members, and again, I'm sure you're, you're, you're intrigued to know who are this, these jury members, which will kind of help decide the destiny in some way of, of many of uh, these big ideas. So let's go over to our jury members to start off with. So head of manufacturing technologies at uh, Composite at Airbus, Yele Blumhoff. Yele, are you with us? Yes, I'm with you. Fantastic. Hello, Wonderful. Yele, you're a familiar face, certainly at uh, Jack World and, and our Jack events across the world as well. Um, tell me, what, what are you particularly looking for 
in these startups? What, what's one thing for you that kind of tells you that this is something that we need to, we need to follow? Well, um, we're always looking um, for new ideas in order to um, feed our innovation roadmaps. Uh, that helps us to um, innovate our products uh, further to the uh, need of the customers. And uh, this is a kind of a scouting activity uh, and whatever um, attracts our uh, needs and is com compliant with uh, our technical roadmap, we will contact and try to implement solutions. Thank you so much. We we'll move on to our next jury member, head of Solve Ventures, Solve, Thomas Canova. Thomas, are you with us? Thomas, I'm sure you're with us. Maybe unmute. I'm sure you're with us, Thomas. I, I think you're coming through. If not, that's okay. We'll come back to you. Our next member of the jury, again, another familiar face, uh, another familiar face that we see and meet and have lots of conversations with at Jet World as well, managing the uh, manager of Future Outsider Materials at Daimler, Carl Heinz Fuller. Carl Heinz, you're there. Hello and good morning from uh, Germany, especially Stuttgart near the airport. Stuttgart near the airport. Is that where you live normally or you're, or you're flying, flying out somewhere? No, I'm, I'm just today in my business apartment. Uh, in my normal life, I stay at Ulm, but today I have some work to do uh, out of the home office. So I will go into my company and uh, organize some things and parallel, I'm to, to join this uh, fair today startup event. Okay, Carl Heinz, thank you so much. Fantastic. Sorry we can't see each other face to face, but we'll, we'll be able to do that at another time. We move on to our next jury member, Director of Product and Process Development for Europe at Magna in Exteriors, our innovation partner as well, Johannes Gutzelmann. Johannes, I feel you're there. I'm here, yes. Wonderful. Hey, Where Peter. are you right now, in fact? Where in the world are you? I, I'm actually uh, in Germany as well as Karl Heinz, and uh, I'm close to the Würzburg area, so roughly 100 kilometer away from Frankfurt, if you okay, know. Okay, fantastic. Tell us, again, it, what are the kind of things, if there was one thing that s would stand out from, from, one, from some of the startups, the big ideas you're about to hear, what would it be for you? Yeah, I guess um, as we are in the composite world, always very interesting in the uh, new things regarding, let's say, um, assembly uh, in combination, maybe hybrid materials. So a composite together with aluminum or steel parts would be definitely something we are currently very heavily uh, engaged in battery enclosure uh, parts for our new e-vehicles uh, in the world and all our customers are looking for solutions which are trying to help uh, getting these parts assembly, assembled in their vehicle. And I'm sure today we'll ha hear lots of ideas that I'm sure not just for yourself but all our other members of the jury things that will, will spark something and help them decide, again, the destiny of these big ideas. Thank you so much, Johannes. And finally, we have our last member of the jury, Managing Director of BASF Venture Capital, Marcus Solbieda. Marcus, are you with us? Yes, hello. Hi. Are you with us, Marcus? I can see you. You can see me. Can you, can you hear me? I can hear you and I can, can see, we you. see you. How about myself? <laughs> I think we can see. Can we see you, Marcus? I see myself now. <laughs> Marcus can see himself. <laughs> I don't know whether everybody else can see you or hear you. I'm going to ask you a question anyway. Remind us, where are you right now, Marcus? Um, near Frankfurt, Germany. Right. It seems that most of our jury are in Germany. However, <laughs> however, that, that's our jury members. Maybe we can uh, jump back to Thomas. Thomas Canova, are you with us from Solve Ventures? Thomas, are you coming through? 
Okay, maybe maybe we can't see you right now, maybe we can't hear you right now, but I think we can see you and hear you. Are you there, Thomas? Can you just unmute your microphone, Thomas, perhaps? Okay, I... I'm sure you're there. I'm, our, our five members of the jury are ready and waiting. I'm intrigued as much as you are and our jury members really to hear our next 10 finalists, all these big ideas. And uh, as I say, we'll be hearing the first 10 right now. A little bit later on at five o'clock, we'll hear the next 10. And then tomorrow at 2.30, we'll have the award ceremony. I'll be hosting that and we will re reveal who those lucky Three winners are of the Startup Booster Competition 2021. Right, I think it's time for all of us to hear the very first big idea. So we are going to jump over to our first finalist, which is 9T Labs. And we're going over to, we're moving across from Paris over to Switzerland. And I believe we have the product marketing manager of 9T Labs, uh, Tanya Koch. Tanya, are you with us? Yes, hi. Can you hear me? We can hear you. I can hear you. And we're all intrigued to hear what your big idea is all about. Tanya, where are you right now, by the way? Perfect. So I'm also in home office in Zurich. Where are you right now, Tanya? In Zurich, Switzerland. In Zurich, Switzerland. Right. Fantastic. So you know the drill. You know how it works. You have three minutes no more than three minutes and then after that we jump into questions from our jury members tanya over to you perfect thank you so hello everyone i'm tanya from 90 labs and i'm looking forward to talk to you about the all-in-one solution for digital composite production you probably know all the classical carbon composites parts that are thin like shell structures or pull through the profiles. But what about those small, thick and complex parts? A lot of those parts are still out of metal. And if they're out of composites, they're, for example, milled out of a composites block, or you put um, fiber chips into a compression mold and then you get the part. This unfortunately is very limited in fiber placement and resolution. And for your simulation experts, it's super hard to predict the performance. And in the end, you lose 70% of those high performance material properties. So what happens in industry for those small parts? Um, a lot of them are still made out of metal. With our end-to-end -end solution that includes design and simulation, additive manufacturing, and post-processing, all those three pillars are connected through our production management system. We want to change that. So we want that our customer can maximize their material efficiency of thermoplasts with up to 60% fiber volume content. And normally our customers are in the high volume production, so they produce 10,000 parts a year. And we allow them to produce carbon composites with full 3D fiber orientation, meaning continuous fiber in X, Y, and Z direction. We challenge with that a 2 trillion um, global part manufacturing market, and we want to make composites as accessible as metal parts. Our customers are mainly active in the aerospace, leisure, and medical fields. And how do we achieve that? We have assembled a world-class team. Um, we're currently 28 people. We have a deep knowledge in composites, simulation, and additive manufacturing, very diverse skills. And we're all driven to build the next manufacturing company that will change the industry forever. So if you want to join the revolution and go with us from idea to production, you can scan the QR code and we identify the right use case, conduct a feasibility study, and then start the production at your location. Thank you so much for your attention. I'm looking forward to the questions. 
Yeah, thank you so much. Wonderful. So, so there we go. This kind of sets the tone for this competition, our first pitch. Now, what we do, we go over to the jury members and we dig a little bit deeper underneath the surface of the big idea. And I believe, Yella, you have a, a first question you'd like to ask Tanya. I would like to understand what is the limitation of your system and what is the differentiation to the competition? Mm -hmm. Yes, sure. So currently we're limited in the build volume. So we have a second process step that is a um, compression mold currently. So we have a maximum size of part, which is approximately a shoe size. Um, this is one limitation. And of course, um, also since we're uh, printing in plain and then put it together as an assembly step, we can only have fibers like 90 degrees um, to each other. And then regarding the competition, um, if we look into additive manufacturing of carbon composites, you often see only the additive manufacturing step. So this makes us really unique that we have those at that second process step that really allows the parts to be ready for series production because we consolidate the part, all voids go, go out of the part and it can be really used for structural parts. Any more questions from our jury members regarding uh, Tanya's uh, pitch? I think we have another 30 seconds on the clock. Maybe no? one question okay. from my side. Sorry, Carl, Carl Hines. Uh, What's your closest uh, serial application uh, you have uh, worked out so far? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So currently, um, for example, MedTech is super interesting. Um, there we're working with um, people that um, do um, some instruments, for example, for medical applications that need um, X-ray transparency. Then for the automotive sector, we've worked with um, Setforge with a part that um, has, is um, having the, the motor and another part, which is um, a connector. Um, and another thing that is coming into market, which I'm very excited about, is a um, watch case. Tanya, thank you so much. And, and that wraps up our, our questions and answers from our jury members. So, so there we have it. That's our first finalist of, uh, of, of, the, uh, of the first 10 we're doing today. But again, although our jury members, they will decide the real destiny of, uh, of uh, the startups we hear today, whether they're going into the final. Again, we would love to hear from you. Let us know in the chat what you think, what you think of what you've heard. And, uh, and we'd love to hear your opinions as well. Although you can't decide who's going to win or not, you can certainly let us know. We move on now to our next finalist, our second finalist, and this is actually Airlight from the UK. And I believe we have Antonio Cianci with us right now. Hello. Antonio, hi. Hi. Hi, Antonio, where are you right now? Love to know. Yeah, now we are in Milan. You're in London? In... Yes. Fantastic, Hello. right, so direct from London. You know the score, you have three minutes, no more than three minutes to share your big idea. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, three minutes is yours. Okay. Thank you so much. I hope you can see. Okay, our light is um, not a simple paint. It's a technology which transforms your surfaces into a natural air purifier. As you know, pollution is one of the biggest threats to humanity, it's very dangerous. And uh, we spend a lot of our time indoor, so the air quality indoor is very is a big problem. Uh, our light is a solution which uses the light of the sun to transform uh, pollutants uh, into mineral salt. It uses the same technology as a solar panel, and it comes in a form of a colored paint, which uh, is uh, used both uh, in uh, architecture but also in combined with materials like as in car. This was a 500 electric cars which we presented last year. 
the properties of the product are very much. It reduces air pollution, it eliminates viruses as well as COVID-19, fights bacteria and mold, retails dust and dirt, and reduces cooling costs in architectural components because of the reflection of the eating part of the air, of the light of the sun, and also reduces bad odors. It does by ionizing. We use the photocatalytic effect, which transforms photons into electrons. Those electrons combine with water and oxygen in the air to make ions. Those ions make all of that. Uh, it is also a very low, low, low carbon product. It has a, a much less uh, CO2 than any other paint. Uh, we can say that we have like 72.7 lower CO2 footprint than any traditional uh, paint. The market is very big, both for architectural paints and air purifiers, and we are very focused on work with that. We have now some very good customers in different fields, uh, just for this channel advantage of sales in real estate, and also as a social messages, which we do a lot of communication with uh, with partner and customer around the world. The company has uh, already did uh, some attraction. We did some funding over the years, which we use it for R&D and uh, market startup. We are now going into commercial. We just have more than 1.5 million of square meters covered and more than 20 partnership. And we also went to a lot of Howard and Press because actually a paint which uh, Kill pollution is a, is, a, is a such a good product which has to be developed but already has get some traction from the market. Uh, we have a good team which works in Italy, Switzerland and UK. And uh, the way we work uh, to us, if I can say, is that uh, we are now setting to put ourselves as a new standard. Antonio, our... I, I have to jump in, I'm afraid. I have to jump in, I'm afraid, just to make it fair and square for absolutely everybody. Three minutes. Antonio, fantastic. Well done uh, sharing your big idea. Again, what happens now is we move over to our jury members to find out exactly how they felt about what they've just heard. So I believe, Carl Hines, uh, you have a question for Antonio. Yes, sure. Thank you very much for your presentation. And I have one or two questions for you. Uh, are there any limitations uh, for the material you coat? Uh, meaning, in our cars, we are not looking on the outside, but also maybe this is interesting for the inside, where we have plastic, leather, or textiles. That's one question. And the other question is, uh, is that um, uh, coating, is it uh, for lifetime, or is it somehow limited by durability? So does it disappear okay, yes. after a while? Yes, uh, we can uh, work also on plastic, textile, uh, also synthetic leather. We did some tests also with Alcantara where we have very good properties. And uh, we have a transparent one which can be used on uh, plastic uh, materials, on metals. The durability in the architectural product uh, is uh, we give a warranty of 10 years, but uh, the properties are lifetime. There is no reduction into the uh, the properties. In uh, interior product where they can be scratched or used because you sit on it, eventually there will be a lower durability, but it's in the size of a couple of years, three years, and things like that. We are doing a lot of tests also with manufacturer to increase uh, the properties because it's also a combination of different uh, parts when you go into some specific material. Okay, a little you know. bit more time, 10 sec 15 seconds for a quick question. Okay, I'll take that as no, and everybody's satisfied and happy with what they've just heard. Antonio, thank you so much. We'll hope good luck, and let's see where you end up. Perhaps we'll see you again tomorrow in, as one of, the, one of our lucky three winners. Right.
We move on slightly, but before we do, again, I've, we've noticed in the chats, we have, it's great, we have people from naturally Paris moving across Lyon, Marseille, but we're also going across to Luxembourg, Taiwan, I believe. We have people from Uruguay, um, I think South America as well. So many, many people indeed. And keep letting us know how you feel about what you just heard. Again, the, the jury members, they decide the destiny of who the winners are, but let us know how you feel. And I, I believe we've got lots of messages in Turkish. We, we can't understand those, but keep them coming, whatever they mean. Uh, well, I, I, I hope they're all positive. I'm sure they are. We move on to our next finalist, our third finalist of the Startup Booster 2021 uh, competition. And that is, we, so we started in Switzerland. We went over to the UK. Now we go over to Germany for HCPI transfer. And we have Philip Gertz on the line, I believe. Philip, are you with us? Yes, I'm with you. Wonderful. And where are I'm, you, Philip, right now in Germany? I'm calling from Dresden, Germany. Yeah. Okay, in, wonderful. In the East. Wonderful. Yeah. You know the score. You know how it works. We know how it works. And we want to hear what you have to say. So are you ready? Yes. Wonderful. Three minutes Let's is go. yours. Perfect. So I'm just waiting for the pitch deck. Oh, yeah, a little bit too far already. Good. So yeah, this is my pitch for Team HPCI. And I have quite a controversial statement in the beginning. I say uh, conventional joining technologies like uh, gluing, screwing, or riveting, you can throw them into the trash can. With us, you save time and money. With our HPCI uh, joining tool, you save time and money and increase your joining performance. Um, there's the problem. In the middle, we have our production engineer, for, exam for example, at Airbus, Magma, or Daimler. And he actually just wants to join part A with part B, for example, for a hybrid part to get an optimized design and a functional component. But he always has very long joining times and needs an additional material. Um, we see that as a bottleneck when we compare the cycle time of a Volkswagen Golf 7 to a BMW i3 with uh, a factor of six. So he always makes a compromise with adhesive bonding. He has a long joining time. And with mechanical joining, he has to drill a hole into his precious composite. And yeah, that's not, very, not a nice design and not very load efficient. Um, we have the perfect solution for that. Our HPCI technology and the HPCI tools um, make it possible to join completely new materials and material combinations with a higher strength. And more importantly, you have a minimized joining time of just a couple of seconds and you don't need any additional material. We are offering the technology know-how, um, the joining tools and also the necessary pretreatment. Um, the technology itself is quite simple. It's only three steps. You have in your initial state your fiber reinforced plastic or non reinforced plastic and a pre treated metal. Um, in the second step, you press them both together, heat it up locally by induction. The polymer melts, flows inside the me uh, metal structure, and after a co short cooling process, the polymer re solidifies and you have a strong connection. Let's see how this looks like in reality. Here at the example of aluminium to a glass fiber reinforced six sheet. We just yeah, place the parts loosely upon each other. Then we have our yeah, prototype Mark 1 HPCI joining guy, which moves to the parts, presses them together. Um, the red part is a small induction coil. Um, the heating process has already started and is already finished now. We can take the part out and put a substantial amount, amount of load onto it. Um, here even the metal breaks and not the joining zone itself. We have tested this for all types of metal plastic combinations like mild steel, uh, aluminum PP and titanium CF peak. Um, the market is everywhere where hybrid parts are found, automotive, aerospace, industrial equipment, um, any, anything like that. And this is an enabler for the composite industry through easier integration of composites in hybrid designs. Philip, yeah. I have to jump in there. I know it feels yeah. brutal, but it, it has to be fair. So it's brutally fair. Let's, let's say that. Thank you so much. That's Wonderful. Fine. But again, <laughs> this is the, these are the moments now where we find out a little bit more exactly underneath the bonnet, as it were, about your idea. And I believe, Johannes, Johannes, you have a question you'd like to ask Philip right now. Yeah, Philip, thanks. Thanks for the real interesting presentation. 
Um, a question from my side is regarding a combination out of thermoplastic and metal. There is always a little bit creep involved and in, let's say temperature differences between aluminum or plastics and metal. Have you looked into that and is that an issue Attends, or? Pendant, le, no issue? pendant les questions, il me voit. Yeah. Sorry, I have a <laughs> double noise here. Yeah. yeah, we have looked into that. We have done uh, aging tests according to PV121200, 12, for example, and PV129. And yeah, we see a, a, a small decrease of the, of the strength, but this is mainly due to the um, behavior of the thermoplastic itself. So by using our yeah, special laser structure we apply before the joining process, we can overcome this um, delta alpha problematic and yeah. um, have aging age resistant um, joints that are also uh, media tight. So for example, for like you uh, said in the beginning for uh, battery components, we have done some tests with, um, with an end user and uh, we can say that the joints are media tight and are definitely very uh, useful for the for battery components or for electric components. Okay, good, thank you. Um, Ian, thank you. Is your solution um, only limited to thermoplastic or um, can you also do thermosat? I, I assume no. And what is your quality concept? So how do you prove that the, the well, I, I think it's a welding, a weld line is, is okay? Yes, um, so regarding thermosets, um, it's basically, we need another layer of thermoplastic in between to join um, thermosets. So we cannot say we we don't need any additional material when we come to thermosets. So, but we have done tests with, for example, um, CFRP and then a small layer of um, peak foil in between. And then we were able to join um, uh, metal to thermoset with this small help of an additional thermoplastic layer. And um, the second question um, regarding quality assurance. So normally we do this by uh, destructive testing, um, but non-destructive non testing, we have some solutions regarding um, flash thermography. Um, we have tested this. So we can also say we have some solutions for um, non-destructive testing, but mainly we do destructive testing at uh, sample parts. Okay, that wraps up our two minutes together with you, Philip. Philip, thank you so much. And again, we don't, I don't know. The jury members don't know altogether yet, but we'll find out tomorrow whether we see you again in uh, the final, as one of our finalists. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Okay, we, as, you. as you can tell, as we go through our big ideas, it gets harder and harder, not just for the jury members to decide who these lucky winners are, but for you as well. So again, keep it going. If if you've just joined us, remember this is the uh, Startup Booster 2021 Startup Competition. Com competition. Listening to the first 10 big ideas, next 10 a little bit later on at 5 o'clock, and then tomorrow we'll find out who, who, who the three lucky winners are walking away as winners of this year's competition. Right, moving on. We've, as I say, we already started in Zurich, we went to the UK, went to Germany, and now we move across a little bit further away. This is a bit further away over to Russia. I believe we have the winner of the, of the Jack Startup Booster Jack Asia competition from 2019 with us right now. And that is Anis Soprint from Russia. Fedor Antonov, are you with us? I'm with you. Hi, Hello. nice to see you again. Hi. Lovely to see you. Right, how are you feeling? Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Always I'm ready. ready. Over there. How's the weather there in Russia right now? Where are you in Russia, by the way? I'm not in Russia. I'm in Luxembourg, actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just pretend you're in and Russia. It sounds fine. good. Fine. It sounds good. Right. Okay. Fedorov, I think we're ready here. You're ready there. Um, three minutes is yours. Okay. Thank you. Uh, hello. My name is Fedor Antonov, and I'm CEO and one of the founders of Anisoprint. At Anisa Print, we bring a new globally demanded manufacturing technology with a focus on light weighting and sustainability. We use composite materials with the best performance to weight characteristics to 3D print optimal parts with zero waste, single stage, fully automated, low energy process. 
So lightweighting is the key trend in manufacturing, and composite materials are the best candidates for lightweight applications. Because these materials have extremely high performance due to their anisotropic nature. They are made from fibers that are directional and made up with orientation of molecules. Um, today, we use uh, anisotropic material for, without properly respecting the directional properties. This locks down the potential of composites. So this is the wrong way, as you see on the picture now. There is a different way to design composite materials with anisotropic lattice structures inspired by nature and engineering history. For, for example, a Boeing Dreamliner was designed with an old black aluminum approach, which is already obsolete, and while an Airbus A2050 concept, which I really like, uh, represents a much more optimal lattice uh, design approach. Optimal composites are made with respect to their directional nature. Such structures are designed in a way that the material directions are matched in loading conditions in every part of the structure. Such structures can be designed with topology optimization and mostly represent curvilinear lattice structures which look very bionic. And that's the true composite. To make such structures, we need maximum freedom and maximum flexibility with minimal limitation to allow different materials to be printed with different fiber content, full control of fiber direction, and capability to manufacture lattices. This is what we call anisotropic printing, a manufacturing technology that allows to create optimal composite structures. Currently, anisotropic printing is implemented within software, hardware, and material products together allowing the production of optimal composite material parts with respect to material anisotropy. Uh, the market for such lightweight solutions is rapidly growing. Today we can use this technology to 3D print mechanical parts and tools, and in a few years this will help us to replace metals in the majority of applications for aerospace, automotive, mobility, robotics, and healthcare, and further on. Uh, here are a few examples of um, already printed parts for different uh, mobility and robotic applications which help to significantly reduce weight, cost, uh, and waste. Uh, yeah, so we offer this uh, uh, full solution with software, materials, and hardware in both desktop and industrial format to cover this demand. We are an international company with offices in Luxembourg, Russia, and Japan, and growing three times from year to year since 2019. Anaiser Print is an engineering focused company with over 20 engineers and researchers with a very strong background in design. I'm going to have to jump in there. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I'm done. I know it. I know how that feels, but uh, has to be fair and square for everybody. And thank you so much for your uh, for your for your pitch and, and sharing your big idea with us. But let's hear now how big an idea it was in the hearts of our jury members. I believe Marcus. Marcus, you have a question for Fedor. Marcus, I believe you have a question. Yeah, what would be um, in in uh, um, what would be your primary application that you are targeting market side? Is it aerospace industry or automotive industry? What what where are you most active at right now? So it's actually step by step. We have the desktop products with which we mostly focus and cover the demand in tools, jigs, and fixtures, and spare parts and R and D functional prototyping applications. And of course, we are with our new solutions with industrial systems. We want to focus on industrial applications, and that's of course mostly aerospace and the growing markets of aerial mobility, so UAVs, drones, robotics, uh, and urban mobility. Uh, and there, of course, the main barrier, you, you know that it's the certification, and so that's why we are approaching it step by step. Great, thank you. We've got another 60 seconds on the clock. Yeah, okay, um, maybe I ask a question. Uh, <clears throat> what is your differentiation, uh, again, versus the competition? Because uh, there is others that have the same solution, more or less. Um, until now, we have not succeeded to find um, a solution that is well, what you're just showing, yeah? So a, a bracket, a high-loaded bracket uh, with that technology. Uh, so what, what does it make work in, in, in your solution? Okay, so, yeah, for us, the main uh, value is the flexibility. So we offer, we are developing the technology which offers the maximum flexibility, which is really capable of producing complex shaped structures, focusing on lattices and uh, fiber steering. So really 
optimizing the fiber direction in every material point and making like real optimal topology optimized design with the curvilinear shaped lattices which give the maximum structural performance so uh and yeah so the that's the, the main difference. So we are trying to bring the most flexible technology, which actually can print these lattices. And this is sort of a unique um, feature uh, on the market, both in terms of design approach and uh, the manufacturing capabilities of the system. Fedor, thank you so much. So uh, thank you, thanks again. And, and hopefully, I don't know, fingers crossed, we might see you walking away a winner tomorrow. Thank you so much. From Russia via Luxembourg, but nobody knows. Okay. Right. We are moving through these uh, great big ideas very, very quickly and quite, quite swiftly as well. It's getting tougher and tougher. Again, let us know how you feel about what you hear uh, in the chat. Um, to, to hear your to hear your opinion of, of what you hear as well. We move on now to our next startup, our next finalist through the competition. Finalist number five. We've just we've just uh, been to Luxembourg. Now we we jump on a plane and we go south to Spain. So over to Spain, and I believe we have uh, B Circular and the CEO Oriel Grau. Oriel, are you with us? I just, are you with us, Oriel? We are in Barcelona. Right, you're in, in Barcelona. Spain. Wonderful, yeah. Barcelona. Feeling good. Barcelona's feeling good. You're feeling good. We're feeling good just hearing that name, Barcelona. Right, Oriel, are you ready? Have you, have you got everything ready for us? Yeah. Wonderful. Three minutes is yours. Perfect. As you know, composites are considered one of the materials of the future. They have excellent properties and they are used in several sectors. But composites have an important drawback. It's almost impossible to recycling this material. And that is a huge problem because circular economy has been activated by European Commission. And nowadays, more of 90% of composites are started in landfills. My name is Uriel Grau, CEO of B-Circular, and we develop advanced materials from composite waste. We have developed a disruptive, efficient, protected, and clean technology able to recycle composites. Our business model is based in, manage, in waste management and product sales. We can recycling of kind of composites, carbon and glass fiber, and final products or scrap. But we are focused in aeronautical, automotive, and scrap of different industries. We can, we can our technology can obtain high quality fibers from waste with 0% resin. We, with this fiber, we can produce thermosets like non woven or fabric with high performance and aesthetic properties. And we can produce thermo, thermoplastics. In this case, the high quality fibers are used as reforced polymers. And we can multiply the properties of the poly polymers. For example, in PP, we can multiply the by nine the original stiffness, and we can triple the resistance of these polymers of the origin. We can use the, these thermoplastics to produce 3D filaments with high performance, aesthetic properties, and all characteristics of the of, of 3D filament or 3D industry. We have a high quality qualified team with extensive experience in different areas with marketing, engineers, fiscal and management and chemists. We have the support of different entities like European Commission and entities from Spain and Catalonia and we obtain different national and international recognitions. And thank you very much. 
Thank you so yeah, much, so. Oriel from Barcelona, sharing your big idea. Right, let's hear from our jury members about what they feel about what they've just heard. So, Johannes, I believe you have a question for Oriel. Yes, I have. Thanks, Oriel, for your great presentation. Um, I have actually two questions. One is uh, regarding volume from this fiber, recycled fiber market. Um, I'm working in the automotive industry, so is there enough recycled carbon fiber for, let's say, high volume production, or is there a certain limit, and how do you get around that? And then the second one is regarding your uh, basic business model. Are you going to develop, uh, are you only focusing on the recycling of the fibers and give them to future material suppliers to compound that in their material, or are you really looking into a new material you will finally produce and supply? Okay, I'm going to, to, to start with the second, second question. Um, our business model is, um, is based in management and the waste, or um, this kind of waste. We, we are focusing on carbon fiber. It's true that we can recycle glass fiber, but um, really we want to produce advanced materials. And for this reason, we want to, to recycle carbon fiber first. In glass fiber, they have a huge problems in different um, industries, where, like Nautic and wind blades industry, they have a, a, a problem nowadays. And there are a lot of companies that you are using. And nowadays, we, are, we have uh, different partners to develop um, composites and develop um, compound, compound to, to make to make these these pellets. We want to, to do this, this, um, this, this work in, in the own company, but nowadays we are started and we, we need the collaboration with, with other partners. Um, uh, so we want to do uh, both parts, the selling products, because we, it depends on the materials we, we are producing um, no. And we are producing in the in in the company. We can make resins and, and vacuum resins infusion. We can do that, and we can we have a three D three D printers. I'm gonna we, I'm just gonna stop you there, Oriel, only because of time. Just to, again, just to make it fair and square for absolutely everyone. Oriel, in uh, Bar is it sunny in Barcelona? I have this image of it's really sunny in Barcelona. Is it sunny? Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, yeah. so <laughs> sunny Barcelona. Thank you so much, and good luck. And maybe we'll see you as a winner tomorrow at two thirty when we announce the winners. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Okay. Right, so we are now, we've heard five of the ten finalists in this section. So if I was to ask you, those of you that are listening to us, that are beaming into us around the world, if I ask you now, if, which winner, if, out of the five, which one would you choose as a winner? This is just for, this is just, I'm just actually asking this, and we, we would love to know from the people that are beaming in. Nothing to do with the jury members, nothing to do with the decision that our jury members will take, but if you had to choose one, who would you choose? Love to hear. Pop it in the chat and let us know. Right, we move on to our next finalist, and uh, so sunny Barcelona, we go right across to which is a place which is quite popular in the chat right now, Turkey. So I believe we have B. Preg Composites and the co-founder and the CTO, Burtsu Karatsa Ugural. I'm sure I said that wrongly. Did I say it correct or wrong? <laughs> so, so. <laughs> that means it was completely wrong. That's okay. Right. Burtsu, <laughs> are you ready? Are you ready to share your yeah. big idea? You, yeah, look, you look ready, you sound ready, I can see your presentation's ready. It's over to you, three minutes. Okay, thanks. Hi everyone, this is Burcu, co-founder and CTO of BPREG. Uh, natural fiber composites are promising materials for sustainability and low carbon manufacturing. I guess we all agree on this, but they don't go mainstream, especially the ones with high performing and thermoplastic based ones. I mean, thermoplastic UD BPREGs. So there appears three problems actually, high prices, industrial scalability, their limited scalability, and reliable performance. 
In fact, these problems arise from the manufacturing approach, uh, how the natural fibers are aligned or the polymer is impregnated. Here you see the current method. Uh, UD fabrics are used to align the fibers, but the UD fabric production is a multi-step process and also brings some uh, limitation in width. And the UD fabrics are either covered with powder or film uh, under high temperature, uh, under high pressure, or uh, impregnated with polymer melt uh, via inline extrusion, uh, but they need uh, size and chemicals. So the current method, we can say, is a very complex and costly due to having several steps and requirement of labor, energy, or chemical intensive processes. What we do is we simplify the whole process with our patent panic method. We produce these UD preparates from natural fibers directly from our special yarns, which includes the natural fiber and the thermoplastic polymer inside. So we don't use any UD fabric, film, powder, or melt polymers. So we skip the UD fabric production steps and also the complex steps in polymer impregnation, which means there is no more add-on cost or technical limitations in scalability. We offer uh, Ecorain, uh, our novel product name is Ecorain, and this is the lowest and the minimum unit cost product in the market, thanks to our patent pending technology. While the UD products will enable uh, industries to go main um, steam with mass production, and the narrow UD tapes will pave the way uh, for adapting automated tape laying systems or tape weaving system and even 3D printing systems for the natural fibers, and all the um, cutoff base can be used as raw materials for injection molding uh, just by simple grinding method. And um, actually, I invented the method and the product during my PhD, and I feel so lucky to have this amazing team with me making this invention and industry reality. Uh, we have a team mix of mechanical engineer, polymer engineer, uh, IP-based uh, technology commercialization experts, uh, and also Agotech woman who, uh, who is leading our flex production in Turkey. So uh, what we believe is we can be a stakeholder in go green strategy of mainstream industries. So develop us in, uh, so for, um, support us developing I have our to natural jump fiber in. composites. I, I have to jump in. Will you finish? Oh, you will finish just a couple more seconds and you will finish. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much, uh, Burtu, for, for, your, for your big idea, sharing your pitch right now. Let's find out from our jury members once again how they felt about what they've just heard. And I believe, yep. Carl Hines, you have a question. Yes, for sure, I have a question. First of all, thank you for your pitch. Uh, it was very interesting. And uh, I'm wondering two things. Uh, did you make any investigations for, for, the, for the LCA life cycle assessment uh, in comparison to other standard composites? And the other question is, how do your fibers behave under wet conditions? Yeah, actually, we are still uh, running through some R&D scale, um, uh, let's say, uh, works. Uh, we made the test for the wet conditions for uh, uh, aging test for the temperature and humidity. Uh, actually, it goes really well because we all changed the impregnation method. So there is no problem with impregnation of the polymer into natural fiber, which helps us to have really good results uh, under wet conditions or uh, with different temperatures. Uh, by the uh, LCA analysis, actually we are still working on with the, uh, with the university with us because it's a very complex uh, process. You know, we need to analyze all the steps. Uh, so I hope we will get the results soon. Uh, but we, we are really, um, how can I say, we skip lots of steps which will help us in reducing the uh, environmental impact of the production and also the product is itself. I think we've got another 30 seconds on the clock. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Just a, yeah, just a quick question on, uh, on thermal property. So if we think about thermoplastic uh, uh, composites, so how high can you go with your fibers in terms of temperature? Uh, yeah, we tried with polypropylene, PLA, and polyamide. So we see the limitation is around 230. Or we can go even higher if we make 
uh, additional treatments for the natural fibers. Wonderful. Actually, we aim to increase the functionality with this kind of uh, chemical treatments. Okay, wonderful. We'll wrap it up there. That is the end of our, our uh, questions from our jury members regarding yeah. your pitch. Good luck. Hopefully, we'll see you perhaps Thanks. as a winner tomorrow in the final. Thank you so much and Hope goodbye. So. Where, are you in, where are you in Turkey, by the way? Are you... uh, I'm in Izmir. Izmir. Okay, wonderful. Izmir, yeah. Thank you so much. Right, we move across now. So from Izmir, we move, we jump on a plane once again and we go over to, which country shall we go to? Where would you like to go right now? We'll go to La France. We are staying right here in France where we are, well, maybe not in Paris. We'll find out in a second. So we have Carbon Access co-founder and CTO. Uh, Kemi Avila Mori. Kemi, are you with us? Yes, I'm here. Fantastic. Hi. Where are you in France? We're in the west coast side of France in La Rochelle. Oh, La Rochelle. Okay, wonderful. La Rochelle. Right. You have three minutes. You know how it works. I can see your presentation. We can see you. We can hear you. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Okay. Three minutes is yours. Thank you. What if composite automation was accessible to all industries? My name is Chemi, I'm co-founder of Carbon Axis, and we specialize in providing turnkey solutions that are simple and easy to use. One of the main problems in the composite industry is that parts are still majoritarily done by hand. This is due to complex layoffs and delicate material handling. As a result, we have high manufacturing costs due to the labor intensive steps and a lack of repeatability in the process. Most of the current automated solutions are not flexible and have been tailored for the aeronautical industry, making them inaccessible to the rest of the industries. Carbon Axis has developed a compact and accessible AFP solution that we call the Excel. The Excel is composed mainly by three elements. The body of our machine is our AFP robotic cell that allows for a safe operation within a small footprint. The heart of our machine is the x -place our lightweight and compact AFP head that with its unique and patented design enables the manufacturing of small parts. We have also developed our own dedicated AFP software that we call the XLay. It's an all-in-one software solution that enables the user to go from part design to robot code generation within one single environment. The Excel machine is a production ready unit that is dedicated to the manufacturing of small preforms. We have, it has the capacity to process thermoset materials and dry fibers, and it allows for flexible manufacturing. We have optional features that can be easily integrated into machines, such as multi-material placement and ultrasonic cut. Our revenue model is through machine sales and services. We have segmented our market in three different categories, industrial customers, universities, and research centers. From preliminary uh, market studies, we have found that there is an opportunity to provide accessible automated solutions outside the aeronautical industry in order to improve part quality and reduce material waste. So how are we getting traction? We currently have two machines installed in our, in our client sites. The first one is X Composite, a sport equipment manufacturer in France. And second one is Compositadura, a technological platform in France, whom we also have a collaboration agreement. We have two machines in the pipeline that will be delivered in the following months, and we are also working with industry partners to validate the technology. And also, we are discussing with different material suppliers, such as Tejin and NGO Carbon, to develop new low-cost materials for AFP. So how do we, do we do it? We have a very strong and diverse team that is able to develop and integrate all our solutions in-house. What's next for Carbon Axis is we're looking for partners to, or investors to ramp up our production, and we're also looking for partners to develop new raw materials. So if you're interested to work with us or have more information about our technology, please send I us an email. We'll we jump in there. And I, I <laughs> <laughs> you made it just a few seconds to spare. Wonderful. Carbon access. OK, let's hear from our jury about uh, about what they about what we've just heard and how they feel about what they've just heard. And I believe, Thomas, you have a question. Yes. So thank you very much for uh, your presentation. Back to your value proposition. So uh, I believe uh, you might have a component uh, linked to quality 
reliability and also uh, uh, to productivity. If we think about your industrial partners, what would be their main focus when adopting your technology? The main focus in like uh, our industrial partner has is that uh, they are they want to automate the uh, production because uh, right now they're using like a uh, hand layups and it creates loads of errors during their production. So what they want is to have a quality control and a process repeatability. So there's the main things that they're looking and at the same time, like uh, to be able to have it automated because uh, as we saw like uh, with the pandemic, uh, one of the things that happened, it was like uh, the problem was uh, with the supply chain. So what our industrial partners are looking at also is to bring back their manufacturing closer to the consumer. We've got Thank another, you. I think, just under 60 seconds now for another question, perhaps, from our jury members. Yeah, um, maybe, yeah. Um, um, I, I, have a I have a question. Uh, so if you're targeting low-cost products in, in your process, um, slitting, the cost of slitting of the material for AFP is quite, uh, quite, quite uh, high. So do you have a solution for that? Yeah, this is one of the reasons why we're discussing with different material suppliers because, uh, yeah, the slitting uh, tapes are mainly done for aeronautical industry. So we're looking to develop materials that are like for low cost AFP. So we have been in discussion with different uh, material suppliers that they are also interested to start developing like new materials. So they're looking into the market right now. And this is uh, the collaboration that we have with them. Chemi, wonderful. Thank you so much. La Rochelle. Is it sunny in La Rochelle right now? Yes, it is. <laughs> it is, right. OK, thank you so much. Good luck. And uh, again, maybe we'll see you tomorrow as one of our lucky winners of the Startup Booster 2021 competition. Thank you so much. Thank you. Right. As you can hear, it's, it's getting tougher and tougher. I certainly wouldn't like to be in the in the seat of a of a jury member a little bit later on when they have to decide who out of these ten and the next ten a little bit later on at five o'clock who's gonna, who they're going to hand pick as the three lucky and well deserved winners of this competition. All diverse ideas, but all definitely credible and, and strong ideas, which which is why it's so difficult to decide who should walk away a winner. Let's move on now to our next finalist already on finalist number eight, our eighth of, of, of ten finalists from La Rochelle. We move over to Switzerland and I believe we have Compare, uh, the CEO of Compare, Amel Kohades. Is that right? Amel, are you with us? Yes, I am. Wonderful. And where are you, we wonder? Where are you in Switzerland? We are based in Lausanne. Lausanne, right. La Rochelle to Lausanne, right. Are you? Re I can see your presentation is ready. You look ready. I can feel you're ready. Are you ready? <laughs> yes, I am. Wonderful. Okay, three minutes. Over to you. Thanks a lot. Great. At Compu, we extend the lifetime of composites, helping manufacturers, consumers, and the planet. Human beings are able to live for 80 years, but most of the products we use every day last only a few years. This is a paradox now. And for us, that's exactly how it started, being inspired by nature to extend the lifetime of composite applications. The use of composites is now widely spread across many industries. And even though they are very great, there is a big issue during the lifetime. Small cracks that grow more and more until catastrophic failure. And this is a global problem. Because on one side, people start to repair such kind of damage and this costs 17 billion dollars per year. But not only that, for many applications, people just replace parts, generating a very high amount of unrecycled waste. This raises big question of lifetime management as well as sustainability. And with Compu, we are bringing the solution to reduce maintenance cost while having a positive impact on the environment. Our solution is carbon and glass fiber textiles that are pre-impregnated with our metric chemistry. We sell those to part manufacturers and OEMs, for example, a shipyard or sports equipment manufacturer for them to manufacture full composite parts with new functionalities, an efficient and ultra fast reaper, as well as an efficient recycling. To demonstrate the technology, we manufacture several demonstrators, but specifically that one to show that we can manufacture complex shapes at a large scale. We impacted it, and in the middle of your screen, you can see a typical damage. 
With the traditional patch repair method, this would take many hours to repair it. With our solution, this is simple. We just come with a heat gun, 150 degrees for one minute, and it's done. We recover all the initial mechanical properties. The beauty of this technology is that we can have multiple products with one magic chemistry, and we plan to expand our product portfolio to best meet the market needs. With Compu, we can touch the entire composites industry. We have now an industrialized product, the Hiltec series, that has been shipped to the first clients into the sports and marine industries. Through the use of standard fiber types, our prepregs are suited for all types of geometries, and the opportunity behind Compu does not stop here, because we are already preparing our next product families for a wide use of this technology within the composites industry. And we just closed our fundraising to secure our market penetration. Our vision at Compare is to provide full circularity to the composites industry by allowing efficient repair and recycling. Such circular economy model has demonstrated the potential to save up to 50% of composite resources, which is totally in line with the UN Sustainable Development Goals. My name is Amal Kohad, I'm CEO of Compare, and this development directly follows my PhD thesis. Together with the incredible Compare team, we are the perfect combination to succeed and make a large impact with this technology on the market. You have issues with your composites, you're looking for new prepregs or looking for partnerships. Get in contact with us on Tech Connect to build the world of tomorrow. Thank you very much. Amel, wonderful. Right on time, all in time, and a strong, bold pitch as well. Right, let's hear from, once again, our jury members about that, what they've just heard. And I believe Yele has a question for you. Yeah, what is the um, targeted products? Um... Um, which, which you could uh, potentially repair 60 times. <laughs> it's quite <laughs> amazing. Uh, what is the mechanism? What makes it work? And what is the effect on weight and cost? Thanks a lot for the question. Uh, the effect on the weight does not change because uh, what we are playing with here is the chemistry of the resin and the resin has uh, a similar density as uh, traditional epoxy resins. Uh, and then on the other side, uh, you mentioned the, the uh, cost uh, uh, aspects. Uh, of course, we are premium products, so and there will be uh, an additional uh, price on that. But what we have demonstrated is that with economies of scale, we can be completely competing with uh, really mass production of composites. Another 60 seconds on the clock. So what are the first industries you are targeting? As I was mentioning right now, um, most of the interest in uh, implementations that we have are into the sports leisure and uh, marine industries. Uh, it's also because we are uh, young companies, but uh, we are already preparing uh, our next targets. And mainly what we want to draw in is also have some, uh, we demonstrated a lot of interest within the wind industry for which we have a huge innovation projects that is running. And we have su support as well from the European Space Agency within the startup program to already go into uh, a really high performance uh, uh, composites and we've demonstrated really nice performances out of uh, this program as well. Amel, thank you so much. Wonderful. So we leave you now um, here in Paris to Lausanne and around the world. We leave you, but hopefully, maybe we'll see you again as one of our winners. So thank you so much. Thanks to you. Right. It, it's, it's really getting tough, isn't it? That was number eight. We move on slowly now to our ninth uh, finalist. And again, it, it's, it's not just tough for, for us looking in, beaming in from around the world to, to our studio here in Paris, but also for our jury members, our expert jury members who know, who, who know what they're looking for. They hear ideas all the time. So they're really picking out the ones that really they feel should walk away winners and have the right potential to, to move forward, certainly within the industry. Let's move over to our next finalist, number nine. And so from Lausanne, we take, a, 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 I think this is more of a long haul flight. So away from Europe, over to Nigeria. So we go over to Nigeria for Green Access. We have the chief, chief strategist of Green Access, Obina Amunadi. Obina, are you there? Thank you. Yeah, you got me. We can, I think Thank we you. can. Are you there? Wonderful. It's looking really sunny to your left. 
beautiful yeah. weather. We'll hear how beautiful your pitch actually is right now. Where are you in Nigeria, by the way? I'm in Lagos, Nigeria. Lagos, Lagos. Nigeria, wonderful. Your, your presentation looks ready. You seem ready. Are you ready? <laughs> yes, I'm ready. Wonderful. Okay, over to you, three minutes. Yes, so at Green Access, we believe that waste is a resource, and um, we've been able to do that by creating uh, materials out of our waste. So at Green Access, we take waste materials and bring our main and manufacture biocomposite materials for the building industry. And though the materials can be also be made to for the automotive um, industry, but we focus on the building industry where we use this um, biocomposite materials to make biocomposite boards of panels, which are used in, uh, used for ceilings and also be extruded into doors. So uh, the world uh, we produce, the world produces about 2 billion tons of waste, and um, about the two, 2 billion tons of waste, um, this we, we generate about 3.5 gigatons of uh, greenhouse gases, and these are due to the emissions from the landfills, and only 5% of these um, waste are recycled. So. Um, and 70% of these waste we have are, are actually recyclables, but we tend to throw them up. Even between me and you, we know that we generate um, we generate waste, and most times we throw it away and have that throwaway attitude. But we want to also tell you that most of those waste you throw are not are not throw away. They, they can still be used to um, create value in our community. So um, we we are focused on the building industry because of we saw the, the the large amount of um, buildings that are coming up um, coming up in the industry. So um, here we, we take out our materials, we take our from food scrap to biomass to um, plastic, hard, um, hard plastics, and also um, kitchen leftovers, where we extrude them and produce uh, the composite materials for the building industry. And so that's the process, and it's, uh, it's, a, comp it's a competitive environmental, um, environmental advantage. It's a cradle-to-cradle -cradle, um, product, and it's climate positive because we take out, um, we use also biomass, which biomass is, uh, is, is sequesters, um, sequesters um, CO2, so it's cost efficient. And also, I want to go to that um, these materials, everybody generates waste, waste are found everywhere. So we're able to see waste, um, sourcing of the materials won't be hard for us to get. So so we, we've done our research, and this is our research. We are focused on the building materials market and the furniture market, and also um, of those, are, those, are focus, those are focus areas. And um, um, our, our, our boards are 30% uh, um, cheaper and eco-friendly. Uh, so, um, so we, we we have a team of a team of four. I'm an environmentalist, um, an engineer. So I've been doing this, um, um, trying to look for the best way to look for the solution to our waste. And we have a material engineer who is also um, does um, also helping us refine our 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 product. Um, so we, we're really looking to raise up. We're looking to raise up um, funds to help us pilot our product and also enter the green construction product, with, where we'll create less impact. On um, climate change and also achieve um, great products with our and create social change in our communities. Uh, thank you. Albina, wonderful and in time as well. Three minutes can last a lifetime for many and also it could be very quick for others. You did it really well and certainly on time. Right, let's hear from our jury members about what they've just heard and I believe Marcus, Marcus, you have a question for Albina. Uh, yeah, quick question. You mentioned boards as being um, the uh, main material, or do you have other um, uh, products you want to supply to the building industry? So it's more of the, we have boards and we have um, doors. They can be extruded into doors, but we focused on the doors because they are easier to make and due to our limitations of what we can or the technology we have at hand. So I'm making boards. On the long run, we intend to also extrude these boards or this biocomposite into doors. And the material, is it all organic or is it a mixture of organic material with other it's, it's, waste material? It's, okay, it's 70 percent organic and 30 um, percent um, plastic. So why we did that? Because um, we, needed to, uh, we needed to make this a uh, more sustainable product. So even if it degrades, it's able to, even if it's thrown away or there's, a, there's, a, there's something that happens in the future, it's able to degrade with the cost of the composite, the cost of the organic material. So we also take um, take food scrap. We can also take bones. We can also take construction demolition waste. That the wood from co um, construction demolition waste, and it makes it easier for um, construction um, construction um, 
ways to be to be used in a, in, in a new product. Okay, thank you. Okay, I think we have we have another fifteen seconds on the clock. No. Uh, okay, I'll take structure... that as. Oh. What, what is the structural capability of your product? So for, for, for now we. we so for now, we are not trying to use it for any, any hard structural um, 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 building. So what we'll just do is uh, we'll mostly use for exterior and also use the ceiling tiles, ceiling tiles um, for um, drop ceilings. So we don't we don't want, we don't use it for hard um, heavy heavy construction um, or structural buildings. So that's why we chose doors and ceiling tiles and exterior and use it for exterior. Okay, Albina, thanks. thank you so much. Green access, that is green access thanks, pitch. Man. We will find out a little bit later on tomorrow whether, whether we'll see you again uh, as uh, one of our winners. But uh, in the meantime, thank you so much. Wonderful. Thank you. Really tough, isn't it? Really, really tough. Really to decide who, these, uh, who the lucky winners should be. All diverse, all credible. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's going to be a real tough decision for our jury members to decide who should actually walk away a winner. We move on now to, guess what, number 10, the 10th finalist of our first part of the competition. Remember, 10 finalists right now, 10 finalists at 5 o'clock, and we find out the winners tomorrow afternoon at 2.30. But for the time being, we go from, uh, from Lagos in Nigeria on a plane over to Germany. We're back in Germany because we have High Connect. High Connect and the CEO, Lars Malta, with us right now. Are you with us, Lars? Yeah, good morning from sunny Hamburg. Sunny Hi. Hamburg. Is it often sunny in Hamburg? Well, <laughs> no. <laughs> well, that might be a sign. This might be just a sign for everybody. Might, the sun might actually bring you luck right now. We'll see. Your presentation looks ready. You seem ready. Are you ready? I am ready and looking forward. Wonderful. Three minutes over to you. So, hello, everybody. I'm Lars Molder, the CEO of HighConnect. And what we aim is to bring hybrid materials, namely steel and composites, uh, together to have the right material in the right place. Because, as we all know, to have really hybrid structures is one way to have good lightweight structures, and lightweight is a good way to boost sustainability. So we heard already about the challenge of joining dissimilar materials. And there are two naturally well-known, um, let's say, ways how to do. One is adhesive, the other one is bolting. And you all know the disadvantages. It's about destroying the composite or having the complexity of adhesives with the certification and so on. And we might think there is another solution and we develop Faust. And what is Faust? Well, actually, uh, actually, uh, we develop a hybrid fabric. So we interlock metal and reinforced fibers already in a hybrid fabric. So it's a warp knitted scarf where metal fibers and reinforced fibers are interlocked to each other. And the speciality of this, let's say, fabric is it is weldable. So what we create, what is our product, is a connector. It's a connector between pure metal to fiber reinforced plastic via a hybrid weldable um, fabric. And how does it look like? Well, actually, here we are. It is a connector that can be directly integrated into your composite manufacturing process. So you integrate it into in this kind vacuum infusion. And what you receive is a weldable composite and metal and reinforced plastic are interlocked by the fabric. So this is really this is really the benefit of house. So you really have an easy joining process to weld to create a hybrid structures. And this gives you a lot of, let's say, freedom in the design process and also in the development. So our business model is typically to have customized profiles, standardized profiles, and uh, also we can license this, and uh, we are going to market end of this year with the first commercial products because the market is huge. We all know adhesives are everywhere, and we just want to cut a little piece of that with our latest technology. And we are already in maritime. As you know, um, we have, um, for example, lightweight superstructures 
Then these can be made from um, FRP and welded to the metal structure. But we are also looking in other fields. And what we are really looking for with our team is going to other fields and making demonstrations. And please come with us. Thanks a lot. Exactly. I had exactly as you finished there, I had a countdown right zero yeah. when you finished. So well done on the timing. We'll see how well you did from maybe some of the questions from our jury members right now. So I believe we have Thomas, who has a question for you last. Yeah, so thank you very much for the presentation. And uh, I guess even if the, your solution is uh, conceptually universal, so um, I, I wonder if, there, if you could anticipate any strong need to support your customers on applying this uh, solution at the, let's say, at the shop floor, at the very uh, basic level for, for specific parts and so on. Would you see the, uh, this as, a, as an entry barrier? Um, as I understand, so what we do is, yeah, on the shop floor, we can really bring the benefit uh, to a lot of engineering or, or production companies because they don't need to, to handle uh, adhesives but welding. So this was your question, more or less. Otherwise, we, we uh, let's say, support our customers by designing uh, the joints because it's more or less uh, between design of weld and between design of composite, and we have all the knowledge in the company. Did I get it right? Otherwise, please comment. Okay. Yes, thank you. Got another another 60 seconds on the clock. One more question, perhaps? Yeah, maybe... Um... Lars, how do you manage uh, the thermal expansion, uh, mainly of, of huge components? Yeah, so typically what we do is uh, we machine down uh, the metal part and fill it up with the composite. So uh, we really go down with the properties and have a smooth transition uh, between the metal and the composite, uh, which gives uh, not a harsh uh, let's say, um, forces if you have the terminal extension. Uh, also, the hybrid fabric, which is not metal glass fibers, has a transition part mm -hmm. into that. So uh, you have really always a smooth transition from one material into a hybrid into another. And this is quite beneficial uh, for such terminal loading. But you, do you have a, a specific resin in that transition area, or is it the basic resin that you're using or your structural component? Uh, depends. We can uh, typically use uh, epoxy, which is also a maritime offshore wind. Uh, we can also make uh, um, um, uh, modified uh, with elastomer epoxies if you need really tough environmental conditions between uh, minus 30 and plus 80, for example, and really protect that. Besides, we are quite flexible, so we can also bring uh, elastomers uh, stripes, press it on here to really protect also the composite and, and metal interactions. So uh, the valve technology is quite, let's say, open also to add with other technologies to make a whole a joint design towards your needs. Lars, thank you so much uh, in sunny Hamburg. Uh, hopefully it brought you luck. We'll see a little bit later on. But uh, thank you so much. And, uh, and uh, maybe we'll see you as one of our finalists. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Wonderful. Bye bye. Right. Guess what? We have come to the end of this first session. This first uh, 10 finalists, you've heard them. We've heard them. Our jury members have heard them as well. 10 big ideas, 10 innovative ideas for the Startup Booster Competition 2021. What happens now is our jury members will already start to, to evaluate what they've heard. And then a little bit later on, remember, at 5 p.m., 5 p.m. today, this afternoon, we will hear another 10 big ideas, another 10 finalists out of the 20. And after that, during the evening time, we'll find out, we'll, the, the jury members will evaluate. And tomorrow at 2.30, remember, tomorrow at 2.30 p.m., I will be announcing at the award ceremony the, the three well-deserved, not just lucky, but well-deserved winners of this competition. And as you can agree, it's a tough decision to make. If I was to ask you, who would you choose out of this 10 three winners 
who would you choose? Once again, let us know in the chat. It won't influence the jury members, but maybe it will just give us an idea, a flavour of exactly how you're feeling wherever you are in the world. And I have to say right now, thank you so much to you wherever you are. You've probably got a lot of different things to be doing in your lives right now. You decided to, you decided to spend it with us. We thank you for that. We thank our pictures and we thank definitely naturally our jury members who've given their time and their knowledge and their expertise to uh, decide who these lucky winners are. We'll be seeing you once again, jury members, a little bit later on, and naturally our partners as well, Daimler, Airbus, and Magna as well. If you've heard something you like, you're curious, you'd like to know more, whether it's a winner or not, go over to the Startup uh, Booster Village at the Digital Trade Show. You can join up with them, ask them questions, maybe link up or even on LinkedIn. If you like what I'm doing, link up with me on LinkedIn as well. In the meantime, we'll see you at 5 p.m. And right now, I would ask everybody to come back on the screen if we can have all our jury members, all our startups as well. And uh, all we have to say now is goodbye and uh, see you at 5 p.m. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.